900 RPM and my feed rate is 5,000, so let's take our first pass. I've set the carriage stop. before it gets too much of a tangle. And I'm going, remember this is a roughing cut, so I'm not too concerned about the finish at this point. So second pass. caliper while the machine is running. is done and now we're ready to plunge cut with our cutoff tool and then put our taper on it. It is now the next day. I think I forgot to show this dimension. I've got my sleeves rolled up. I wanted that to be inch and a quarter and we're within uh, two or three thousandths which is plenty close. Don't waste your time on dimensions that aren't critical. And that is one that is not critical. Now remember I made a couple changes here, or a change. I uh, lengthened the hub from one half to three quarters, so the overall length is now one and a half inch, even though that's not shown on here. 
I'm ready to start making the V so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plunge cut it with the cutoff tool and I'm going to go to uh, the depth of one half of an inch and I need uh, I want to make this one fourth wide this tool is three thirty seconds wide so I'm going to go all the way in to that depth make a note on my uh, cross feed uh, a collar here and then I'm going to uh, machine a second and a third groove right alongside of it until I get it quarter inch wide. Now if you start with a, a wider one uh, that's okay too. I like the narrower one because it doesn't seem to chatter quite as much. So let's go ahead with that and then I'm also going to double check the depth with uh, the caliper. And it should be one inch diameter in there. We'll see if it is. I know I'm going into a lot of detail here, but some people seem to want it. Turn the machine on. And I'm going to come in until I touch the work. Right there. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Down to 400 RPM. I'm zeroing out my collar, which is not on camera. And in I go. Got some alumina tap here. I think I'll try that. I don't know if I need it or not. This is pretty free machining aluminum. I've turned in one revolution, which is 200,000. This is what I'm using. Revolutions at 400,000. So I'm going to stop it and measure it. Let me turn the camera off momentarily. I'm down to full depth now. Don't put your fingers in there when the machine is running. You can use a little brush to clean your chips, even while it's running. I just realized that uh, this caliper uh, will not work while it's running because the uh, legs are a little bit too wide. It'll jam in there. So I checked it with uh, a regular ruler. By the way, the ruler is a half inch wide, so laying it in there like that was a pretty good way of doing it. And I also double checked it with uh, this uh, depth gauge. And I'm at a half inch, and now I'm resetting my collar to zero so that on the next two passes I will go into the same depth. Exactly. Laying those tools aside, now I'm going to back out the cross slide. And I am going to next move it over about uh, a little less than the 330 seconds which is the thickness of this and I'm, I'm going to feed that one in to the same depth. Make sure you don't have any rags or anything on your lathe that might get caught in that lathe dog. Now I'm going to turn it off, finish this pass, and then I get on to the next uh, pass. I'm plunge cutting the third groove, and I'm just about into the right depth. And then we'll be done with this operation. I'm watching my collar here so that I, I go to the same depth, and when I come around to zero, all right, there we are. 
back it off. We've got a groove that's about one fourth inch wide. That, again, that isn't a real critical dimension. Now I'm going to change the tools and show you how we're going to make the uh, angle. If you recall, the groove is 30 degrees. So we're going to set the compound, or I have already set the compound for half of that, which is 15, and I've set it off to the left, and we're doing taper turning here is what we're doing. And we'll do all of our feeding out with the compound. And this is the compound rest method that you've seen me use in uh, other videos. And I've ground a tool, especially for the job. It's a 3 16 square. Well, I'm not sure at all if it's showing up but it's a very acute angle uh, of facing tool and it's going to reach in there very nicely put that in the, and it, I've already preset it on center so I don't have to worry about that make sure you put that uh, cutoff tool exactly on center wiggly because I've mounted it on a special boom that will reach over the lathe and uh, it's real uh, delicate. Even a breeze will move it as I talk. I feel like Cecil B. DeMille with a boom camera. Alright, I'm going to turn the machine on and remember I'm feeding with the compound rest. Not the carriage, or not the uh, cross slide rather. Now I'm going to move the uh, carriage up a little bit each time to engage the feed. And all of a sudden you're going to see a taper start to appear on this side. I'm feeding both in and out, which isn't always a good uh, procedure, but I'm doing that now at least to open up the slot. And I will have to stop and remove the chips from time to time. I find I get a better surface finish when I feed out rather than in. Chips are sharp. Should have my hook. set my tools at a slightly different angle here in a minute. And then I'll finish this side and then we have to flip the work around to do the other side. Now of course you could uh, move your compound off in the other direction but then you'd also have to grind a uh, left hand tool. I don't want to do that. 